that's enough fooling around with this patch. Uh, this is MIDI ARP, um, which is sort of two things at once. On this side, we have a set of arpeggiator controls. And on this side, we have a synth voice that you can use to control with that arpeggiator. You can also send the arpeggiator to an external synth. If you have one uh, that doesn't feature an arpeggio uh, or, or an arpeggiator, or if you like the particular set of this is kind of a quirky arpeggiator, but it has some features that not every arpeggiator has. Um, so I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, I stopped the arpeggiator by pressing the left stomp switch, which turns off the latching portion. And a light turns off when that happens. And I change the tempo with a tap tempo here and a clock divider. Uh, it also accepts MIDI clock. Um, so those are just some basic things. On the arpeggiator side, there's some pretty common controls. There's a gate length control, so you can determine how long notes play for. Um, there is a range control for the arpeggiator. It goes up to plus four octaves and down to minus four octaves. So we've been hearing uh, plus three octaves. I'm going to turn off the randomization options. Um, that's how it sounds when the randomization is off. And we can go up to four octaves, it's not going to sound that great. You get into kind of shrilly territory there. It depends on how you've set everything. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into the low range. I'm just going to show that it has one. And I really like an arpeggiator with a negative range. I find that I often uh, end up starting my arpeggio, my arpeggio at too high of an octave. And so the negative range allows you to, to create some really, I think, pretty cascading sounds. And it should be noted that uh, the arpeggiator works in a played mode. So it's not up, down, up and down, or, or whatever. It's always what is in some arpeggiators called a, a played or manual mode, which means the order that you play the notes in on your MIDI keyboard determines the order of the arpeggio. So... <laughs> Like so. Um, let's turn that back into a positive range. You can randomize the order of the notes. So within a given uh, range of, of the arpeggiator, they'll randomize but it'll keep going up through the octaves in the same order or you can randomize the octave uh, which is on a note by note basis so or you can 
keep the same order, but randomize the octave. <laughs> Like so, um, and then there are some ratchet controls. You can set ratchets. They can either be randomly determined where this number will be the maximum number of ratchets, or when that's off, this will be the number of ratchets that it does per step, and you can randomize the likelihood that a ratchet occurs on a given step when it's at 100 a ratchet will always occur. Um, so this goes up pretty high, but part of the reason I didn't attenuate it is because uh, you can achieve some really interesting sort of FM ring mod sounds with a really high ratchet level. So it almost becomes uh, a tone shaper at that point. But for more common ratchets, you want to keep this control really, really, really low. Um. You can set it. It takes a little bit of dialing in. But you can create, you know, some interesting patterns that way. There's also a step chance, which is the chance that any given step in an arpeggio will play. And between all of those things, you can get some really interesting uh, variations on a, a pretty uh, boring arpeggio that, that allow it to, to have some, some life and complexity uh, over time. Um, on the synth side, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but there, it's a, a square wave based synth. There's pulse width, pulse width modulation glide. There's an envelope that is fixed to the filter. It can be applied to the amp. When it's off the amp, the amp, the VCA for the synth is just using uh, gates. So if we change that, Uh, and the, the filter has a key tracking option. So at 0.500, it's key tracking at 100%, which means it's following the, the pitch of the oscillator exactly. Um, but you can go up to 200%, where it'll open uh, faster than the oscillator will play. You can also set it to negative key tracking which can be useful sometimes if you have, let me set the range high again, if you have some really high pitched notes, that may be too, too much negative key tracking. Let me set the frequency higher. So as those really high pitched notes come in on this plus four octave arpeggio, uh, the filter closes more rather than opens, and so they become quieter and, and less uh, screechy, is the word I'm going to use. So it's an interesting option, particularly, I think, on a arpeggiated synth. Um, that allows you to, to really dial in how the synth voice interacts with uh, the arpeggiator. Um, 
and then you won't be able to hear this, but there's a, a random panning that occurs. Uh, you can set how wide that occurs. This is a monophonic input, so you might hear uh, the, the synth become quieter in the direction that the, uh, you know, phone, phone speaker or uh, mic is pointed, but that's because it's panning to the other monitor that I have set up in here. And then there's just a simple uh, reverb light at the end uh, to add some sense of space. Whoa. And there, there, there is that range uh, coming in. So again, I like to keep it not all the way up to plus four, but if you start an ARP at a lower octave, you might want something that, that goes up higher. Uh, I've been using, you know, C4 as my sort of standard for this demonstration. But if your keyboard set lower, uh, or you start your arpeggio somewhere else, and it can, the other thing that I, I haven't mentioned yet is it can support up to eight notes. Um, stand as I bring my hand back. So that's it. And along the bottom there's a, a little indicator that shows what note is playing and it may not be picked up all that well by the camera. The, the colors aren't maybe the most distinct but it does change color uh, depending on what octave that note is in. Um, so that's MIDI ARP uh, which is I think a lot of fun to play with. Uh, and maybe potentially useful for people who have um, an external synth that, that doesn't have an arpeggiator that and their you know controller their MIDI controller doesn't have an arpeggiator um, you know this could be a useful go-between to get arpeggios out of some other synthesizer so thank you for watching <laughs>